the mind has a tendency to carry a lot of baggage around. And so when you come out to a place like this, it's good to divest yourself of your baggage. John Vuhan tells the story of the time when John Lee was going to go on a trip into the forest. And a lot of his students in Bangkok wanted to go along, so they made an arrangement to meet at the main train station. You know, John Fugan himself had been out with the John Lee many times in the forest and knew that if you went with the John Lee you had to carry as little as possible. But a lot of the other people hadn't been with the John Lee, so they didn't know that. Several of them came with two or three suitcases. And so when they'd all met at the train station, and John Lee took one look at everybody and saw the baggage that everybody had. So instead of getting on the train, he started walking down the tracks. And well, when the John walks down the tracks, everybody else has to walk down the tracks. So here were people carrying two or three suitcases. And sure enough, they started complaining about why they had to do this. After all, he could see easily they had so much baggage. Why was he making them do this? First he didn't say anything. Finally he said, if it's heavy, throw it away. Put it down. Kept on walking. And so people had to stop and sort through their baggage, take out all the unnecessary stuff and throw it into the lotus ponds that are on the either side of the train tracks there in Bangkok. Some of them actually threw suitcases away. And when they got to the next train station, everybody's load was a lot lighter. And that's when John Lee allowed them to get on the train. The message is, as a meditator, you want to be as light as possible. And so one way of lightening the mind is to remind yourself when you're out here the, of the things that are not here. You don't have people pushing their ideas on you through the radio, advertisements, all the sensory input. It's largely designed to arouse either greed or anger or delusion. That's not here. Just clean it all out of your mind. All your social entanglements are not here. All you've got is the mind and the body sitting here. That's all. That's it. Surrounded by wilderness. And so anything that doesn't have to do immediately with your mind or your body or the wilderness right around you, you can clean out of the mind, clean out of the mind, clean out of the mind. Each time you breathe in, think of the breath coming in, and then as you breathe out, you just clean stuff out. all the nerves of your eyes and ears and your other senses. Each time you breathe in, think of the breath cleaning out all the unnecessary crud that tends to build up, like the crud that builds up in pipes. Breathe in and then just clean it out. Breathe in, clean it out. Not only are you cleaning these things out, but you're also healing your nerves. or nerves of your eyes and ears and nose, tongue, body, at the moment don't have to take on any outside issues at all. They can just simply be, sit here and be bathed in the breath. John Lee makes an analogy with fire. He said there's the fire of greed, anger, and delusion, and that burns your nerves away. But then there's also the fire of jhana, metal absorption, strong concentration. He says it's a different kind of fire. It's cool. It's soothing. Instead of wearing down your nerves, it protects them, nourishes them. So you can think of the whole nervous system having nothing to do but be bathed in the breath right now. 
And if the mind tries to use it for any other purpose, you say, not now, not right now. You don't have to, you don't have to make reference to anything at all outside of the body. And if the mind is complaining, say, where is the entertainment, where is the fun, where is the, where is the intelligence? You say, don't need it right now. And there are different kinds of intelligence, the kind of intelligence that has to think and figure things out. That has its place, but not right now. Except for figuring out ways to clean things out, ways to just stay right here. Your frame of reference is the body in and of itself. It doesn't have to be the body translated into the world or translated into whatever abstract issues you tend to think in terms of. Just the body sitting here breathing. There's the presence and the absence of stress, the presence and absence of pain. That's it. There's disturbance and lack of disturbance. And you can think in these ways. It's called dwelling and emptiness. In other words, you don't have to think in terms of self or not self or who you are. Any thought that comes into the mind that suggests that you're such and such a person, you say, that, I don't need that thought right now. It's just breath, body, awareness, that's all, with no history, with no future. Just allow these things to be on good terms here in the present moment. If other thoughts do come into the mind, you don't have to get angry at them. Just allow them to go away. If you find yourself getting involved, be gentle about pulling yourself away, but firm about pulling yourself away. Now, In other words, you're trying to create as few issues as possible. To give the tools you have here, your senses of sight, hearing, smell, taste, touch, ideation, you get a chance to rest. They don't have to take on outside burdens. They don't have to be responsible for anything else. Everyone needs this kind of quiet place where the body just is a body. The awareness is just awareness. You don't have to convert it into thoughts. You don't have to convert it into ideas. And just allow these things to be together in their elemental nature as they're experienced right here in the present moment. That's it. Because it's from this perspective that you can see the Dharma things as they're directly experienced. And it's from this position that you're able to see the Dharma clearly. In other words, as long as you stay here, you can see things from cause to effect and the connections among them. Because if you want to see anything at all, you have to, you have to be steady. If you're not steady, if you're flitting around, the mind flits to this idea, then it flits to that idea. It doesn't see the connections. It can make up connections, like when you're playing connect the dots. You have a little dot here, a little dot there, and you decide it's simply a matter of choice where the lines go. But that's because you just have dots. That's why you need the lines. But if you stay right here in the present moment consistently, you've got more than dots. The lines are there. You don't have to fill them in. So this is a good place for the mind to rest. It's also a good place for the mind to see what's actually going on. In particular, you start seeing the decisions you make. These are the factors that shape your life. And 
if you're not right here. They can shape your life underground. In other words, the mind makes decisions, but it's not totally open with itself about what the decision is or why it's making the decision. It's like the people in the back rooms of a political party. A lot of decisions get made, but they don't want anybody to know why the decisions are made. And where did they get the idea for that? That's the way the mind asks with itself. So you want to be here both so you can see the decisions and also, as I said, because this is a nourishing place for your awareness to be. It gives you strength to be at this spot where there's nothing you really have to do except just be with things as they are in the elemental nature right here in the present. It's nourishing. It gives strength to the mind. When the mind has strength, it can make better decisions. One, because it's clear about what's happening, and two, it just simply has the energy that's needed to make the right decision, the skillful decision. Because so many times we want to just get things done with without having to put too much energy into it. And as a result, our decisions got sloppy. When your decisions are sloppy, the results are sloppy. And the sloppy both for you and for the people around you. This is why abandoning your responsibilities while you're meditating like this is actually a responsible action. Because you're putting yourself in a position where you can make better decisions and have a better influence on your life and the lives of people around you. It's like you're charging your batteries. As long as you keep the charge up, you've got plenty of energy. When the charge starts leaking out through your eyes, your ears, your nose, your tongue, your body, thoughts of past and future, and you're not charging it up, your energy level goes down. The decisions you make get sloppier. You want to make shortcuts. You don't want to be bothered with a lot of things, difficult issues, complex issues. Precisely the issues where skill is required. So take this opportunity to be irresponsible. You don't have anything else you have to think about, anything you have to be responsible for. Just simply be here with the sense of the breath, the sense of the body, your basic sense of awareness in the present moment, without making it reference to anything else in your life. By being irresponsible right now, you find that is the responsible choice. The basis of being truly responsible for your life. Truly responsible for the happiness that you can create both within yourself and around yourself. 